Coming up, a parent's worst nightmare. Police combing the Cable Beach area this morning. They found the battered body of a young boy believed to be Marco Archer. Our cameras are there. We're also at the morgue tonight as the grieving family begin the process of identifying their loved one. Columbus Primary, a sad scene today as classmates realize Marco is never coming back. They share their hurt with us tonight. And the state wins over a man that has as his business slogan, everybody wins. Craig Flowers in court today, shelling out a hefty sum. We have the story. Get ready. It's Wednesday, September 28th. The Bahamas Tonight starts right now. Covering the islands of the Bahamas, ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. It's good to have you along this evening. I'm Shanique Miller. This is the Bahamas Tonight National Report. The big story tonight, the worst case scenario becoming reality for the family of an 11-year-old boy missing since last Friday. Today, police discovered the body of the young boy they believe to be that of Marco Archer of Broome Street. The discovery, according to police, came from a solid team of investigators who took a strand of evidence and pieced it together enough to not only lead them to the horrific discovery, but also the suspects. Our news team was first on the cable beat scene this morning and have been following this story all day. We have team coverage focusing on various aspects of this story. We begin tonight with the discovery. Clint Watson joins me live in studio. Clint, now this is an outcome nobody wanted. Shanique, you're definitely correct about that. This family wanted not this, but at the end, there is apparently going to be some closure. This is a story that no doubt has gripped the entire nation. In fact, it's such a big deal for police that the commissioner of police himself led the team of investigators, choosing to be the sole spokesperson for the force today. He told reporters that police intelligence led them to search bushes behind a pink apartment complex on Yorkshire Drive, Cable Beach, around 1050 this morning. And that's where the shocking discovery was made. ZNS News was the first to arrive on the scene. Only us caught police early in their investigations pulling clothing out of a white garbage bag that was reportedly dumped in a garbage bin in front of a pink apartment complex, Yorkshire Street, Cable Beach. A group of officers could be seen combing through what was marked and bagged as evidence. This process taking place shortly after a neighborhood search yielded this devastating result. That search um, led to the discovery of the body of what appears to be a male child, a relatively young male child. We are doing due diligence as a result of the discovery. We have, as I speak to you, three persons in custody um, that we're talking to, and we are satisfied that we have made significant progress already based upon this discovery that we have. At this stage, Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade said they were being careful not to say much. We do have something to tell you. It is premature and we're not going to make mistakes at this early stage of this investigation. Are you satisfied, Commissioner, what you're able to, to ascertain from your investigation so far that you're able to resolve this matter? We feel very, very confident, very, very confident that we will resolve this matter. Uh, I've indicated to you that already we have persons in custody and uh, I'm going to ask you to please assist us in assisting the wider public uh, so that we might bring the quickest resolve to this. The police commissioner adamant that this was not haphazard as they knew exactly what was going on. We have qualified trained people and I simply ask the Bahamian public again to repose in us the confidence and trust, accord us the respect that we are due and please allow us to do the work that we're trained to do. This is very unfortunate, and I'm always very, very disturbed, very troubled. Our members of the press, based upon what I saw, along with these detectives, I can assure you, had you seen what we saw, you'd be really bothered. The Commission of Police has taken a hands-on approach to this case, leading the actual investigation himself. I've already done some due diligence myself. I've issued some directives, and if you listen to me carefully, when I leave this location, I am going to the Central Detective Unit, and I've issued already some other directives. The fact that I'm at this scene speaks volumes to you, and it should speak volumes to our public. If you are alert, you'll understand exactly what I have not said. 
And Shanique, seeing the commissioner on the scene again with yet another case that could be a deadly end to another missing boy bears a striking resemblance of several years back with the case of the missing five Grand Bahamian boys. Commissioner Green Slate at that time headed up that investigation in Grand Bahama as well. So we know from that that he is quite passionate about these kinds of cases. Not to mention, Shanique, that when senior officers are often involved, there might be some implication that they want to watch over the process themselves because of the characters that may be involved. Clint, I know the commissioner said they have about three people in custody, but is there a lead suspect that perhaps you can tell us more about? I'm glad you asked that question, Shanique. ZNS News conducted our own investigation and information we received have confirmed that one of the men police are holding in custody is one who was just released from prison in December after serving a sentence for a similar charge. In fact, we understand that when police looked at this particular case, it was so familiar that instantly they thought about the other matters this individual has been accused of and they knew exactly where to look. Well, it appears their intuition combined with outstanding police work led them to the biggest break in this mysterious case and a possible suspect to be charged before the courts. Janique? Clint, thank you. Of course, we will continue to follow this story, but our coverage continues this evening. A call about the body of a young boy found this morning sent Marco's family into panic mode and then grief. Taking no chances, family members immediately flocked to the Central Detective Unit and later the Princess Margaret Hospital, searching for answers and hoping that the body found was not their missing loved one. LaDawn Davis was at CDU and then followed the family to the morgue at PMH. She picks up the story. Just moments after the body of a young male was discovered in the Cable Beach area, the frantic family of young Marco Archer rushed to the Princess Margaret Hospital's morgue to identify his body. Due to the extensive decomposition of the body found, the family was not able to positively identify whether or not those remains are what is left of 11-year-old Marco Archer. However, one of Marco's older brothers became overwhelmed with emotion and pain so intense that he collapsed a short time later. Family members were notified of the incident and rushed to his aid, comforting him while giving him a bottle of water in an effort to bring calm. Family friend and president of the Bahamas Against Crime, Reverend C.B. Moss, says he is appalled at the fact that the Bahamian public failed to not only support the family, but heightened the search to help find him. My outrage is directed more at the Bahamian people. The fact that for five days a young boy was missing and there was no outrage. If you didn't know it, personally, you couldn't detect it by the, the, the behavior of the, of the citizens. If this had been in the United States, that nation of over 300 million residents would have been on red alert from east to west, north to south, until that matter is resolved. Moss believes there is a trend developing where young boys are being kidnapped in the over-the-hill community. He says a few months ago, another young boy was picked up in that area and sexually assaulted. Moss is now calling on the judiciary to expose sex offenders and pedophiles in the country. They should be exposed to the fullest. They should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. They should not be condoned. And that's the problem in this society. We cover up too much. We are an intellectually dishonest society because we know what's going on for the most part, but we sweep it under the carpet, particularly if they come from a particular social or economic class. We protect them. Now, like we said earlier, those remains are believed to be that of 11-year-old Marco Archer. Family members were taken to identify the clothing found at the scene, and a media briefing on this heart-wrenching ordeal should be done before the end of the week. LaDawn Davis, ZNS News. Just heartbreaking. Well, other than his Broome Street home, it was the one place Marco spent most of his time each weekday, his school, Columbus Primary. Today, classmates and teachers of the 11-year-old describe him as a quiet student where and they were in mourning as well after they received the devastating news. As we hear from Cyan Thompson, the school family was hopeful, praying for his safe return. It was just last Friday afternoon that 11-year-old Marco Archer was dismissed from Columbus Primary School. His teachers say every school day since he's been missing, they've been eagerly awaiting his return. I'm sitting here at the desk where 11-year-old Marco Archer sat just Friday afternoon before he left school to go home. We're told by teachers that every day that went by, they were eagerly awaiting to see him again. He's going to turn up alive. But that did not happen. As each day passed by, that hope faded. 
It was early afternoon when news broke at the school about Marco's death. I was in a state of shock. Um, I know he was missing, but I was still hoping for the best. And immediately I called a staff meeting and informed teachers who would have heard a little something already, but nevertheless, we had a meeting here in the staff room and I spoke to them regarding what I had heard at that time. And of course, many of them were distressed. Many of them were saddened by the news. Many who actually cried about it. And immediately I, I advised them on how best to relay the news to the students. Marco had just begun the sixth grade three weeks ago. Here's what he wrote during the first week of school. Marco talked about his love for playing basketball and soccer. His favorite subjects were math and English. All of his teachers would give you the report that Marco was very obedient, well-mannered. As his present teacher stated, even to go out and play. During lunchtime, he would ask, may I go out to play at this time? He would um, ask simply because he was one of those students who liked to play, but he ensured that his work was completed. And he did a very good job with his work to the extent that he was given a leader of his group within the class. Um, so he was well liked. Marco, who had just celebrated his 11th birthday in August, spent five years at Columbus Primary School. His homeroom teacher telling us it wasn't easy revealing the news to his classmates, as most of them were his friends since the first grade. There was a little bit hope in me that Marco was still alive. When we heard that Marco, when my principal announced it to us that Marco was no longer with us, I stayed on in the staff room. I couldn't go to my classroom right away because I didn't know how to go and give my student the news. While Marco did not go missing from school, the principal says they continue to stress to children the importance of safety. We use our assembly time uh, to reiterate, to emphasize, uh, especially at dismissal time, that they are to remain in a certain area they are to ensure that if they are asked to leave the compound, they are to ensure that that is a person who is used to picking them up. Um, and I want to add, however, that sometimes it's not only persons who are strangers. We repeatedly talk to them even about persons who might be familiar to them. While the school is planning a memorial for 11-year-old Marco Archer, they say that they will have ongoing counseling for students who were in his class. Diane Thompson, ZNS News. Well, our news team took to the streets this afternoon to gauge your reaction to the establishment of a sex offenders register. This as the body of 11-year-old Marco possibly was found by police. Many residents interviewed believe a sex offenders registry is badly needed. So that we would know who we we'll are looking out for and we will be much more protective while uh, they are in the area, um, you know, and be vigilant for these people. You got to make a prime example of these men who are going wrong or whoever raping these, these young men and killing. The Bible said thou should not kill and if you kill, you should be killed. Why are they putting these people up in, in, in prison, taking them out and putting them on bail? That you, if I kill, and you put me on bail, I can come out and do the same thing, will make them think they can change, they ain't a chance. I think people should definitely know who they is. Um, they have to do a better job of monitoring these people or making them check on or something after they release from prison. Instead of just wandering free, they shouldn't be able to leave so much islands or go certain different places. Week, like say week by week, they should have like a check-in. They should be able, like the first five or six years of the prison, they should have to be able to check in. They should at least be made aware of where the, where the whereabouts is. Their employers and their church members should be given daily update reports to the police or somebody in charge of letting them know how his behavior is and stuff like that. The community have to learn to work together. Know who people are, know who their children is being with, know who their children's friends are. So when something like this occurred, they would know exactly who their children with, where they are, and, you know, things like this wouldn't happen. But, you know, it is sick to see that people would do such a thing to a little child. 